Hey guys, what's going on? Tenebris here. So about a year and a half ago, I made a video criticizing this funny Hypixel forum post about this guy who was trying to say that Optifine is an unfair advantage and therefore should be banned on the Hypixel network. Optifine is an unfair advantage. Hypixel should ban all players that use Optifine because of its FPS boosting capabilities. Optifine is an unfair advantage because some people aren't allowed to download it or their PCs are too slow to download it. Please, Hypixel, I only get 5 FPS and others get 1,000, so they beat me because my frames are bad. Please, Hypixel, ban Optifine users. Now, obviously, I found this post absolutely hilarious when I first saw it. I mean, come on, Optifine is clearly not an unfair advantage, and just because it gives certain players more FPS doesn't mean that someone else can't just download and use it. But what if the Hypixel former that made this post was actually onto something? What if Optifine was, in fact, an unfair advantage? And up until recently... I would not have agreed. All right, guys, all right, never mind. Okay, you got me. Okay, Optifine is not really an unfair advantage. However, Optifine does give some very sketchy effects in terms of PvP that you might not be aware of. So that's what this video is about. I'm gonna be breaking down how Optifine actually gives players speed and reach. And this concept's gonna be completely alien to a lot of my viewers. So I, once again, I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna go from the very beginning and we're gonna get to the final conclusion and you guys are gonna be able to understand the whole thing. So don't worry, strap in. This is how Optifine gives you reach. So to start off, we need to talk about how Minecraft determines whether or not a specific click actually should land as an attack. Now, obviously, in Minecraft, there's swing packets and attack packets, and Minecraft has to run a lot of math to determine whether or not those swing packets should become attack packets. It is if you're within three blocks of the enemy player and looking in their hitbox sufficiently so that your ray trace, which is the line that comes from your head, intersects with the enemy's hitbox. Basically, you have to be looking at them, and you have to be within three blocks. Then you can land an attack. Now the line that comes from the head of one player that intersects to the other player's hitbox if they attack lands is known as a ray trace line. And it, you can actually see these lines by pressing F3 and B or using a hitbox mod on bad line client. And those lines basically show you whether or not a player is legitimate. Obviously if you're looking in from the outside and you're, you have the hitbox mod on and you're spectating players and their line literally does not even come close to the enemy player, like is completely off. Like I'm not talking about a slight difference. Then obviously they're using reach. But how exactly is it that Minecraft itself knows whether or not to make this swing packet an attack packet? How does it know to actually damage the enemy player? Well, as with many things in life, it comes down to math. A lot of math and a lot of code. And obviously that code is then going to be running in your Minecraft and is going to tell you whether or not that hit is legitimate or possible or not. So what does Minecraft use to calculate the actual length and angle that this ray trace that comes out of the player goes. Well, it uses two things. It uses the player's yaw, which is their horizontal movement, your horizontal mouse movement on the x-axis, and the player's pitch, which is their vertical mouse movement on the y-axis. But how exactly does Minecraft know exactly where this ray trace has to go? Well, it uses trigonometry, and I know that I might lose a few people here, but I'll try to keep it really simple. So we'll use a 2D analogy for you guys to understand. Uh, take a triangle. If you have an angle on a side of that triangle, you can use Sokotoa or whatever you're taught in math class to basically calculate other angles and other sides of this triangle. So, and Minecraft uses the exact same sine and cosine functions that you would use in math class to calculate where that line should go. The main difference basically being that Minecraft does this calculation in three dimensions and not two. And the exact same thing I just described with the ray trace vector and the yawn pitch applies to movement, except now it's like your uh, your movement in one in the x direction versus the z direction, and then your combination of the two movements determines like how far you go and for how long you're pressing and everything. So the exact same thing that I just described with reach, basically with the trigonometry and everything, also applies to movement in the same way. Now, with that in mind, you might think that Minecraft is basically a giant calculator, calculating a crap ton of different things at once, like, okay, what is the next reach, what is the next reach, what is the next reach, okay, what is the next movement, etc., etc., etc. But that is actually a very inefficient way to do things in code. So every single frame in game, Minecraft calls a method called get mouse over. Now this happens when you look at blocks and you look at entities. This function then gets information from the sine and cosine table to calculate the reach. It doesn't run the sine and cosine functions, it looks them up in the table, or in Java as it's known as an array. Now an array in Java is basically a collection of variables of the same types. 
So to break that down, it's like having a giant list of all of the possible look vectors that a player can have, or all of the possible move vectors that a player can move at, instead of calculating it every single time, and this method is a lot more efficient. Now what exactly does this mean for an in-game player? Well, it means that every player on Minecraft, when the Minecraft math is calculating what reach they should get, or how far they should move, it'll take the X and Z movement, or the yaw and pitch, to calculate each vector respectively. But instead of running the calculation, it will go look up those values in the array and find the closest match. So, like, for example, if you're at 60.000001 angle, Minecraft will just be like, oh, that's basically the same thing as 60 angle, we're gonna get this reach vector. So, with that all explained, I can now get to the point. How exactly does Optifine give a player reach? Now, if you go in-game on an Optifine client, you can go to Options, Video Settings, Performance, and then you'll see an option called Fast Math. If you hover over that Fast Math option, it will say that it uses optimized sine and cosine functions, which can better utilize the CPU cache, and thereby increases your FPS if you turn it on. So what exactly does Fast Math do? Well, it actually uses a smaller sine and cosine array, or table, than Vanilla Minecraft does. Vanilla Minecraft has a table of values that is 65,536 variables, meaning that all of the possible results of all the yaws and pitches, or X and Z movement, are only the 65,000 variables. However, fast math on Optifine decreases that to 4,096 variables, meaning that when Minecraft takes in those angles to calculate those vectors, it's going to have to round more to get to the closest actual possible value. So I'd like to give an analogy to explain what I'm saying right now so everyone can basically understand and be on the same page with this. Let's say you have a number. Let's say the number is 8.52. What the vanilla Minecraft array would be able to do is round that number to the nearest tenth place. So if you have 8.52, it becomes 8.5, and that's because it has 65,000 variables. However, when you turn on fast math, those variables are fewer. You only have 4,096 of them, meaning that each variable is more spaced out, meaning that if you had 8.52, it would round to the nearest whole number, meaning it rounds up to 9. So basically, Optifine's fast math rounds your vectors to a much less precise precision in order to basically speed up the game. So with that all explained, and you guys understanding how this works, we're now going to talk about what exactly this affects in-game. Now, we've talked about how the reach vector works and everything. Now, you can imagine the reach vector as either rounding up or down a certain amount, depending on if you're using fast math or not. Meaning that at certain yawn pitch angles, your maximum reach vector will actually end up being higher than 3 blocks, and at certain other yawn pitch angles, your reach vector will end up being less than 3 blocks. So how can you actually see the effect that Optifine Fast Math will have on your movement or reach? Well, with reach, we have reach display mod. However, the problem with reach display mod at the moment is that it only displays around two decimal places. So you can get to like 3.02 or 3.14, but you couldn't get to like 3.00001 or whatever it would show up. So there's a modified version of reach display mod, which should be in the description. If it's not, then I was told not to release it, but it should be in the description, which goes out to like 16 decimal places. So basically, you can test this on any server by standing still, looking at an enemy player, and turning on and off fast math. And you can see that while you turn on and off fast math, the reach display mod changes. So in this test that you can see on the screen right now, higher reach display mod values actually mean you're getting less reach because you're standing in the same position with a higher value, meaning that obviously when you hit three blocks exactly, you're not going to be able to get that hit. And lower reach display mod values mean you're actually getting more reach. Now, this all depends on your angles. Now, in certain angles, in certain yaw and pitch angles, you're going to get more reach. And on certain yaw and pitch angles, other angles, you're going to get less reach with fast math. It really depends on how you look. So, with that all in mind, how big of an advantage is fast math in-game? Well, vanilla Minecraft reach is three blocks, obviously. With fast math on, though, you can get reach up to, wait for it, wait for it, 3.000253 blocks versus the 3.0 in vanilla. So, you are technically getting reach. Okay, okay, obviously, obviously, this difference between the vanilla and the fast math is so slight that it basically makes no difference in combat. I mean, after around 10 minutes or so of playing with fast math, you may occasionally get an extra hit or two. So, in fact, it might be a slight advantage over a long enough period of time, but 
in reality, in a simple 1v1, it's likely not going to happen. I mean, the problem is, is that that distance, that 0 .000253 distance between the 3.0 and the maximum reach that you can get with fast math, is so slight that the chance of you getting a hit at that distance is extremely minimal. On top of that, it only happens at certain angles, and at certain other angles, it actually decreases your reach, meaning you're actually getting 2.999746 reach maximum on certain angles, and 3.000253 reach on other angles, meaning the effects of the Optifine fast math basically cancel out, unless you're always looking at these specific angles, and in that case, you technically have an extremely, extremely slight advantage over your opponent. So what does this mean for movement? Well, it also means that certain jumps and certain motions that were not possible without Optifine Fast Math now all of a sudden become possible at certain motion angles. The video you're watching right now, credits to Cinemal, shows a jump which is completely impossible to do at this angle without Optifine Fast Math. You can try it yourself. All you have to do is create the setup that you see in the video, and then on a higher version of Minecraft, make your facing 134.82422 degrees, and then just jump. And you will be able to make the jump with fast math on, and without fast math on, you will fail. And that's because just like Reach, Optifine fast math is basically rounding up or down this movement vector. Okay, with all of that in mind, what exactly does this mean for servers? Is Optifine going to be banned now? Is it all over? Optifine is an unfair advantage confirmed. Well, basically, no. First of all, Almost everyone uses Optifine anyway, so there's really no need in, like, banning something or, like, preventing someone from joining with it. And anyone can go download it, anyone can turn on fast math, and anyone can get these very slight advantages. And these very slight advantages basically make, like, virtually no difference in PvP. And I, I can't say it's exactly no difference, because it does make a difference. It's just that the difference that it makes is so so slight and so improbable that it will only affect maybe like one out of a hundred games or something like that. And I don't have statistics on how often you will actually get a reach hit on that angle or like be moving at that particular angle. Uh, it, it, it's very, very rare. I assume it's probably once every 20 minutes of continuous PvP with your enemy. But if someone wants to go out there in the comment section and actually calculate it, I would greatly appreciate to see a video or something talking about how often this actually occurs. And the final thing I'm going to touch on here is anti-cheats. Obviously, a lot of anti-cheats are becoming extremely precise. Server-side anti-cheats are becoming extremely precise nowadays. Now, I'm not really going to talk about the reach section, but really focusing on the movement section. Uh, if you have a speed check that's, like, really, really precise, like, you're predicting the player's motion down to, like, 16 decimal places, the farthest the position packet can be calculated in Minecraft, uh, then this will actually affect it, and it will actually false flag your anti-cheat, because it's definitely possible to make a prediction check, a prediction speed check, that's this accurate. So you do have to account for it, but it's relatively easy to account for it. You can just basically look at what angles are rounding and what they're rounding to, and then just incorporate that into your prediction. So regardless, it's possible to fix it in anti-cheat, so I wouldn't worry about that at all. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about this or anything else that you'd like to show me, make sure you join my Discord, link in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on it. And if you really want to support me, buy my Bad Lion Client cape. There should be a link to that in the description. And see you guys later. Peace out.